Hey, hi everyone. So welcome to my Cooper Two. And for this video, I will discuss, or I will start to discuss the different uh, integration techniques. So I will start with integration by parts, and then uh, we will discuss the trigonometric integrals, and then trigonometric substitution, and then uh, integration of rational functions. So, uh, we will also discuss uh, evaluation of improper integrals. Okay, so this is the outline, and let's begin with how do we create uh, a given function using integration by parts. Okay, so from your calculus one, so your uh, differential calculus, we already know the product rule. So, we have this product rule. If we have a product of two functions, then if we want to integrate these two functions, then we can use, sorry, we, we want to differentiate these two functions, then we will use the product rule. So we have u times the derivative of b, you know, and then b times the derivative of u. So knowing this, we can actually utilize this for integration, you know. So we can transpose this v d u to the other sides so that we have b of u b no, minus b d u is equal to u d b and then swapping their position so u d b is equal to b of u b minus b d u again and then integrating this both sides you know so if integrating everything so we know that the integral and the differential operator are inverse operations then the integral and differential operators will cancel out. So therefore, the integral of u dv is equal to u times b minus the integral of b du. Okay? And this formula like right here is the definition of the integration by parts. So how do we utilize this formula? So given we have this u and this dv as our uh or just two functions as a product of each other so function one and function two okay we can integrate this given function using integration by parts by utilizing this formula so given uh u we can utilize the deriv derivative of u substituting this to the formula and then the dv integrating this dv we can substitute the v here Okay, so the goal for integration by parts, the goal here really is, since we still have an integral here now in the right side, is to simplify the integral. And now, kasi if, if, if this is the integral, we do not have no, a table for integrating that function. What we can do is to simplify that integral no, using the integration by parts. So hopefully, this integral here will be much simpler than the original integral no, of our function. Okay, so then let's begin with an example. So let's say we have this integral. So we'll evaluate this uh, integral of x sine x dx. So we do not have a direct formula, a direct table that help us integrate this uh, function. No? You can try using u substitution but it will it will not work. It will always have uh, a remainder no? in, 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 in its simplification. So we can try using the integration by parts. So the first uh, thing here, no? since the, the formula for integration by parts is the integral of u dv is equal to u v minus the integral of v d. The first thing here is to identify which of these functions. So we have a product of two functions. So we have x and sine x. And then actually there is dx, no? But we will deal with dx later. So with regards to this, how do we choose whether it should be u or should it should it be the dv, you know? So we can think of u and dv as just a variable or a function, you know? So how do we choose that? There are different 
uh, suggestions in calculation or, or, or in the methodology in the textbooks. No? So the, there is a general method or a general rule for choosing mu and dv. So there is the Liate rule. Okay. So the Liate rule chooses the u. No? So the u here should be on the left side and the dv here should be on the right side. So meaning, uh, looking at this, no? identifying these functions, we should know if it is logarithmic, if it is inverse, no? trigonometric or inverse hyperbolic, if it's algebraic, okay? if it's trigonometric, and if it is it's exponential. Okay? So, if it is uh, logarithmic, then it will be the first priority for choosing as u. If it is exponential, then the, the, this would be the priority for choosing the db. So this is the general uh, methodology for, for identifying the db. Although not most of the time, no, or, or some of the cases, we might have two algebraic functions, or just a single algebraic, or just a single logarithmic. No? So we have to be uh, mindful. No? Anyways, no, this, is, uh, this is utilized maybe 90% of the time if we have different functions, or maybe 99% of the time. So I will, I will give you a counter example wherein uh, this might not be helpful no? later. Okay? So for this, we have x and sine x. So what is x? So x is actually algebraic. So algebraic is anything that is uh, polynomial, no? So we have x squared. We have, let's say, x squared root of x minus 2. So that is algebraic. But if we have logarithmic, we have ln, log, and so on. Inverse. I think we know that already the inverse, uh, trigonometric and inverse hyperbolic. Trigonometric, we have cosine, uh, uh, sine, no, and so on, and then exponential. Yeah. Should exponential includes a uh, hyperbolic then, no? So, uh, choosing this now, so uh, sign here is trigonometric. Therefore, what should we choose as u will be the a, no? So, we have algebraic. So, u here is chosen as our u. We have u is equal to x. And then dv will be sine x. So what will happen to science? So, so what will happen to dx? No, so dx will also be utilized. Uh, this is the surname of your db. So we have to include the dx in the db. So basically sine x dx is your db. Now what's next? No? So we want to use this formula. So we only have the given u and db. No? So we want to find the b first and the du. So to find the b and the du, we can integrate the dv, no? we can integrate this, and we can differentiate this. So differentiate this, differentiating this and integrating this, we will have du, or differentiation of u is equal to x, we have du is equal to dx. No? And then for integration, so we can integrate this both sides, no? so that we will have v, and that equals to what? So we have here sine x, the integral of sine x is negative cosine x. Okay, so it should plus you know, right? But uh, just to remember now, we can just add this arbitrary constant later on if we have a final integral, you know? Okay, so now we have already this table, uh, this, this, uh, this v and v. We can now utilize the formula, you know? So we have u times v. u times v is x, you know, x times negative cos x. And then minus the integral of b, so we have negative cos x, okay? And then your du here is just dx. So we can simplify this. We have negative x cos x, and then plus the integral of cosine x dx. So the integral of cosine x dx is uh, sine x, so positive sine x, so therefore this will be your integration. No? So we do not have an integral anymore. We can add the arbitrary constant c. So this will be your integral. Okay? So that is how we use the integration by parts. Okay, another example. So we have to evaluate the integral of the L and X. So now, how do we evaluate this integral? No? Okay. So we do not have 
uh, we can we cannot use a formula here. There's no explicit formula in the textbook. So we can use now we can try using integration by parts. But how do we use integration by parts? We only have one function, you know. But actually, it has two functions. We have l and x, okay, and then actually multiplied by dx, you know. Or you can imagine this as uh, multiplied by one, you no, know? and then dx. So we have ln x and 1. So what is ln x? This is logarithmic. This is algebraic. So any constant is actually algebraic. So u here will be what now? So remembering the liate rule. So the, 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 the l here will be chosen as u. And then the e here will be chosen as d. So u here is ln x. And the dv is equal to 1. No? And then multiplied by dx. So always don't forget, no, don't forget this the x term. This is included as your or, or as a surname of your dv. So you take the derivative of v. So we have here one times dx is just dx. So differentiating this, what is the differential of ln x? The derivative of ln x guys is one over x, no? And then the integral of dx, so v is equal to x. Okay, so the integral of dx is just x. So utilizing the formula, the integral of, okay, we have the formula, no? so this is equal to uv minus the integral of b du. So this is equal to u, we have ln x multiplied by v, which is x, and then minus the integral of x, and then du is 1 over x. Actually, this should, there, there, should have, uh, there should be a dx here. So this should be 1 over x dx. Yeah, so we can see that uh, we can cancel this out and then we can simplify this. So we have x ln x ln x minus the integral of dx. So what is the integral of dx? This is just x. So this is your final answer. We can just add the arbitrary constant c. So this will be your answer for integration by parts for this integral. Okay. Next one. So we have e raised to x sine x dx. Yeah. Okay, so remembering again the Liate rule. Okay, actually you can try uh using u sub. You can imagine maybe this will uh we can maybe try using the u substitution or something else. No? Manipulation of this integral. But as you can see, it cannot be done now. So we have to use integration by parts. So choosing this uh, u no, and bb, so this is exponential and this is your trigonometric. So therefore, what should you choose as u will be sine x, no? And then dv here will be what, no? So dv here is e raised to x and including the dx. So finding the derivative of sine x to find the u, we have cosine x dx and then for the integral of e to the x dx so v is equal to e raised to x again so simplifying this using integration by parts we have u v minus the integral of e du so u is equal to sine x and then v is equal to e raised to x minus the integral of v so e raised to x and then du here is cosine x dx okay so simplify this, you know, we simplify this for a bit. Okay, so we have an integral here that is, again, not integratable. As you can see here, this is not integratable, again, using the elementary tables. The tables that we discussed before. So we have to use, we can use the integration part by parts again. So, utilizing the integration by parts again, you can see that u here again. Yes, so we can use integration by parts indefinitely. So, we can use u as cosine x again using the Liate rule and u v is equal to e to the x dx. So, finding the derivative of cosine x, this will, this will be negative sine x. And then v here, so the integral of e raised to x dx is e raised to x again. So again, we can utilize no, so uh, bringing this down. So we have minus 
Okay? So, this is uv minus the integral of pdu. Again. So, again, if we have here this, e raised to x sine x minus. So, we have u times b. So, u times b is, we have cosine x and e raised to x, right? So, this will be just e raised to x cosine x for u times b and then minus the integral of b du. So, we have b, so e raised to x and du. Sorry, I forgot the dx here. So, we have negative uh, sine x or negative e raised to x sine x dx. Okay? So, if you use simplification, this will cancel out. You know? So, this will become positive. And then we can distribute this uh, negative sign to the other side. So we have e raised to x sine x minus e raised to x cosine x plus the integral of e raised to x sine x dx. Yeah. Okay, so what happens? No? So we have another problem. We we should use the integration by parts again no? in this uh, portion, right? Well, we can use integration by parts here. But uh, we know that this integral, diba? so this integral, we are trying to solve for the integral of uh, e raised to x sine x dx. So everything here is equal to the integral of e raised to x sine x dx. So therefore, this one, no? this uh, expression here in, on the right hand side, it's actually equal to the, the base problem e raised to x sine x dx. Diba? So be mindful that when, uh, actually this should be negative, no? Sorry, it should be negative. So be mindful that when you have this integral, okay, so if you have this integral here, no? And uh, it repeats itself, no? So the problem is e raised to x sine x and it rotates or, or it it will have another integral that is similar to the original problem then we can stop here you know and then we can solve this using algebra so what do you mean by algebra we can imagine this integral as a variable and we can solve this variable by transposition so think of this now so we can transpose this to the other side diba? so that this negative will become positive diba? so we have e raised to x sine x dx and then plus the integral of e raised to x sine x dx is equal to this diba? so e raised to x minus e raised to x sorry e raised to x sine x minus e raised to x plus x yeah. so this two no? these two terms here can be combined as one if you imagine this as a variable let's say y diba? So, if we add this to, we have 2y. So, similar with what we do in algebra, we can combine this into 2 times the integral of e raised to x sine x dx. Okay, and then we can divide this equation into 2 so that the integral of e raised to x sine x diba, is equal to 1 half times e raised to x sine x minus e raised to x cos x. Diba? So, if we divide this by 2 for both sides, then we will have this. Since we have no integral on the right-hand side, and this is the original problem, then we can add the arbitrary constant plus c. So, this will be your final answer. Okay? So, that's it, no? So, uh, just to remember, no, just to summarize what we have done here already. In integration by parts, there are usually three cases. No? So, the first case is when the u vanishes upon differentiation. It becomes zero. No? So, usually kapag ang um, yun is, let's say, polynomial is x squared, after a while, this will be just dx. No? So that is what I mean by vanishes. No? So the first example is uh, it will vanish. No? And then two here is that BDU becomes integrable. So when BDU becomes integrable, meaning we can evaluate this 
using elementary uh, tables, no, yung mga formula natin that we are already familiar with, then we can finish the integration by parts. And then the last one is when the integral BDU is your original problem. Or in other words, it repeats. No? So you can see the, the integral of BDU repeats as this original problem. So we can use algebraic manipulation to solve for its integral. No? So remember the three cases. No? This will be important. Okay, so uh, how about when we are trying to solve a definite integral uh, using integration by parts? So let's say we have this problem. Okay, so we do not have an integral of this arctan x dx, but we don't have a formula for this. So we can use integration by parts. We can try, you know, actually we are trying to, to, to solve this. We can try solving this. And one uh, technique that we can use is integration by parts. So we only have one function, but in reality we have our time and uh, and then multiplied by one, no, and then the x. So we have actually two functions. So this is uh, inverse trigonometric. This one is algebraic. So therefore we can say that u here we can use u here as our time. Okay, using the again the Liadi rule. So this is the i and this is the e. So dv here is equal to 1, no? And then 1 dx, so therefore this is just dx. So what is the derivative of arc tan x? The derivative of arc tan x is 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. Yeah. The integral of dx is x, yeah. So this will be equal to uh, what, no? So we have ub minus integral of dbu. Although we have the limits 0 to 1, and then we have also the limits here upon evaluation of 0 to 1. So therefore, we have, what we have here now is equal, this, is, this will be equal to x times r tan x. Okay, evaluated from 0 to 1. Okay, and then minus the integral of BDU. So we have x. And this, so we have uh, x over 1 plus x squared. Uh, dx no? evaluated from 0 to 1 or the integral is evaluated from 0 to 1 okay so we can evaluate this already no uh, this definite integral but uh, how about this we can integrate this integral right using u substitution as you can see if we let this as u ba? So if we let this u is equal to x, 1 plus x squared, then its derivative will be 2x dx. So we can see that we have an x variable here. Probably we can cancel this x. No? So therefore dx is equal to du over 2x. Okay, so let's rewrite this again. So we have here... Uh, the integral from 0 to 1 of x multiplied by du over 2x yeah? and then uh, the, the denominator will be just u. So we can cancel this x, we can factor out the, the 2 here. So minus 1 half the integral from 0 to 1 of d over u. So this is just basically integral from 0 to 1 of d over u which is the, the integral of this is ln u, diba? integrated from 0 to 1 or evaluated from 0 to 1. So u here is equal to 1 plus x squared. So this will be just 1 plus x squared and then evaluated from 0 to 1. Okay, so now let's evaluate this definite integral. So we have here uh, 1, no? so 1, evaluate this at this and then this one. So we have r tan x times 1, so we have r tan 1, and then we have, uh, so since this is 0, if we substitute 0 here, this will just cancel out, so we have 0, and then minus 1 half, so evaluating this uh, at 1, so we have ln of uh, the absolute value of 1 plus 1, so this is 2, 
and then minus uh, ln of, we have 1 plus 0, so we have 1 here, and then that's it. Uh, so we can cancel this as 0 as well. So what is our tangent 1? So our tangent 1 is what? No? So if this is a triangle, diba? So if, if, if this is y is equal to r tan, uh, r tan 1, therefore we have uh, tangent y is equal to 1. Diba? So if this is your angle y, then the tangent no, is just the opposite over the adjacent. So we have here. We have 1 over 1 here, diba? So therefore, what is this? Uh, what is this triangle? A special triangle that is forty-five degrees. So y here is forty-five degrees. But again, remember that we will always utilize the radian, no radian mode in in, in calculation. So in radians, for forty-five degrees is pi over four, no. So multiplying this by uh, pi over three sixty, sorry, three sixty one eighty degrees. This will be equal to pi over 4. So we have here pi over 4. And then this is just 0 minus uh, 1 half ln 2. Okay, or we have this ln, no? so this will be simplified. This can be simplified further with, uh, we can be simplified. We can say that this is also equal to pi over 4 minus ln 2 raised to 1 half or the square root of no? so we have this as our final answer okay so that's uh let's have more examples here let's have more examples here so with integration by parts we can actually uh derive reduction formulas no? And let's have an example wherein we can find the reduction formula for the integral of, let's say, sine x and dx. You know? So we want to prove this integral so that the integral of sine raised to an integer or an integer greater than or equal to 2, yung n ni anito, should be equal to negative 1 over n cosine x times sine raised to n minus 1 x and then n minus 1 over n integral of sine raised to n minus 2 x dx. So how do we do this? No? So it can be tricky here, no? So there are a lot of ways to do this. But uh, actually you can factor out this, no? So we can try factoring out this, no? Instead of sine raised, sine raised to n uh, x, this is equal to, we can factor out one sine, no? So we can reduce the exponent by 1 and then factor out 1 sine x. Ayan. So we have sine raised to n minus 1 of x times sine x. So if we simplify this, this would be just equal to sine raised to n minus 1. So maybe we can try uh, utilizing yung, uh, UNDV no, for this one. Okay. So... We can try, no? We can, we can, we can let this as u. We have, let's say, u is equal to sine raised to n minus 1 of x. Diba? And then dv here is equal to sine x. So don't forget the surname of the, the dv term, which is your dx. So we have dx here. So differentiating this. So what is the derivative of this now? No? If we find the derivative of this, so n here is a constant, diba? So we can utilize the power the power rule. So we have du and then transferring this to the coefficient. So we have n minus 1. Diba? And then uh, minus 1 to the exponent. So this will be sine raised to n minus 1 minus 1. So this will be n minus 2 x. And then by the chain rule, you want to also find the derivative of sine. So this will be cosine x. And then, uh, don't forget also the derivative of x, that is dx. Okay? And then for the b, no? So integrating this sine x, we have negative cosine x. Okay? So now, utilizing the formula, we have ub minus integral of du. 
this will be equal to uh, we have on sine raised to n minus 1 x ba? and then multiplied by negative cosine x okay and then plus oh sorry not plus but minus the integral of b so b here is negative cosine x and then du here is n minus 1 sine raised to n minus 2 and then cosine x dx that's a long thing no? a long one no? so this is equal to negative cosine x uh, sine raised to n minus 1 x and then this will cancel out diba? so this will cancel out this will become positive so plus the integral of this and then this one also what is this n minus 1 is a constant so we can factor out this n minus 1 so we only have an integral of we have here we have cosine uh, squared x and then we have sine uh, sine raised to n minus 2 x uh, what we, for, we forgot the, ano pala, no, the x here and then cos x dx. and then the x okay what now it became complicated diba? so what should we do here it became a little bit complicated. Diba? So, what should we do here? Hmm. Actually, no. What can we do here is, what is this? So, the Pythagorean uh, identity, you're familiar with the Pythagorean identity that uh, we have sine uh, squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1, diba? So, we can see that cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x, diba? Transposing this to the other side. So, therefore, we can rewrite this as, okay, so we're rewriting this again, everything here. This will be equal to, uh, I will make this a little bit smaller so that we can fit this in. So we can rewrite this as 1 minus 1 minus sine squared x and then sine uh, raised to n minus 2. Diba? Sine minus 2 and then uh, you have here uh, x dx. Okay. So. What's next? We can distribute this sine raised to n minus 2, this to each of this. Diba? So what do we have here? We have um, so we have here an integral of sine raised to n minus 2 x dx. And then if you multiply this two, no, so what will happen to their exponent? They will add no. So we have two plus n minus 2, so the negative 2 will cancel out. What remains will be, we have plus sine raised to n, no, x. And then actually, kahit nandito na lang yung dx, no? Or, we can include the dx here anyways. dx here, and then dx here. Okay, so what now? Ano? So, what can we do here is that we can simplify this integral. We can say that this is, um, uh, we can distribute this no, to the other side. So, we have n minus 1 integral of sine is to n minus 2 x dx. And then, uh, we have plus n minus 1 and then the integral of sine raised to n x dx diba? so what happens here now is that we have a the original integral here diba? so we are trying to find the integral of sine of uh, raised to n x dx so we know that this is equal to sine raised to n x dx diba? so we can probably transpose this to the other side so that this will become the integral of sine raised to n x dx minus n minus 1 integral of sine raised to n x dx no? is equal to uh, this. I forgot the x here. 
plus n minus 1 integral of sine raised to n minus 2 x dx yeah we got x so this can be simplified as you can see now if we distribute this uh what happens is that we have actually we have sine raised to n x dx uh, actually factor out na lang natin to no? so we, we factor out this so we have here 1, so this will be 1, and then we have minus n plus 1. So we can cancel this negative uh, values here, so that this will be negative, right? Oh, why is that negative? No. Ah, we forgot the negative term here, sorry, sorry, sorry. So this should be negative here, yeah. So this should be negative, it should be negative, so this should be positive. This should be positive, no? So this should be positive, this should be negative, ayan. So plus. Ayan. Okay, so we can cancel this one and negative one so that what remains is just this n. Okay, and then this is again negative cosine x sine n r uh, is n minus one x minus n minus one integral of sine raised to n minus two x dx. Sorry, no. So therefore, if this is only n, then we can divide this whole expression into n. No? So dividing this by n. The integral of sine raised to n x dx is equal to negative 1 over n cosine x sine raised to n minus 1 x minus n minus 1 raised uh, over n and then the integral of sine raised to n minus 2 x dx. So as we can see, this is the original formula. Uh, why is it positive? Why is it again? Um, what is wrong? Oh, oh, what happened? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, what am I passing to? No, um, hmm. sorry, sorry, sorry. Positive. My bad. No, sorry guys. So this should be ne ito pala negative. Since if we oh nga pala dito pala tayo nagkamali. Ayan. Oh, so my bad. No, so this should be negative. This should be positive. This should be positive. So this should be positive. Okay, yun. No? So, simplifying this, it will be, uh, the solution should be this. Okay, so that will be your production formula. So, given, let's say, you have sine raised to 6x. So, you want to integrate this, sine uh, raised to x, x dx. Then, you can input the value of n here. Into the equation, you have 1, negative 1 raised to 6. And then six here, and then six here, six here. So you have you, what? Le, what is left? Sine raised to four x dx. And then you can use the production formula again to solve for the integral of this. So this makes the integration of uh, powers of trigonometric functions much much more easier. You know this reduction formulas. Okay, so let's have more examples. So uh, let me try. Solving uh, to improve our uh, comprehension in this method. Okay, so we have this integral. So, how do we evaluate this integral? We can utilize different methods, no? So, you can utilize U substitution here. Okay, so using the U substitution, we can solve this. So, we can also use U integration uh, by parts, of course. So, let's try the solution or, or the methodology for integration by parts. In this problem, you know. So how do you choose that? So usually, you know, the, the rough approximation of u and dv, you know, or choosing the u and dv. So usually u should vanish as much as possible. 
And then the DV here should be integrable, no? Actually, ito yung uh, can integrate the DV, the U should vanish, no? As much as possible. As, as much possible. So, usually polynomials uh, are chosen as U. So, we can try using U as X or using X as U, no? And then DV here will be square root of X plus 3. So, I can write this one as X plus 3 raised to 1 half and then DX, no? So, the derivative of U is equal to X is DU is equal to DX. How about this? What is the integral of this? So, the integral of this is what, no? So, we have plus 1, ba? Or we should use U substitution here. So, let's say we, we are utilizing U and V here, no? So, we can try W. So, let uh, W is equal to X plus 3. Uh, DW is equal to DX. So, this will become the integral of uh, w raised to one half and then dx is dw so this will be equal to w raised to three halves over three halves plus e ba? so we can eliminate the plus three here for now so this will be equal to two thirds w raised to three halves so w is equal to x plus three so we have x plus three raised to three halves so i'll just write this in red no so we have two thirds uh, x plus three raised to three halves. So this is your v. Now using integration by parts, so this is equal to u v minus integral of v u. So u here is x, and then v here is two thirds. No? So we have uh, two thirds x, and then x plus three raised to three halves, and then minus integral of v u. So we have p. So we have two thirds. I'll just factor out the two thirds, guys, no? And then here is uh, x plus b raised to three halves. And then this will be just dx. Okay? So actually, uh, we can integrate this. So we can let u is equal to x plus three. du is equal to dx. So therefore, this will be uh, integral of u raised to three halves. And then dx is just du. So minus two thirds um u raised to five halves over five halves and then plus c now. No? So we can retain this. This will be just equal to two thirds x x plus three raised to three halves. So simplifying this, we have uh a this. So this will be three times five, and then this two will be multiplied by this 2 so we have uh, negative 4 over 15 and then u so u is equal to x plus 3 so we have x plus 3 raised to 5 halves and then plus so this will be your final answer okay so let's try comparing this answer to uh, the well using IBP this would be your answer now actually you will have a different answer if you use the u substitution. Okay, let's try the u substitution. No? Let's try mm -hmm. uh, u sub. So if we try u sub here, so we have uh, the integral of x and then x plus 3 dx. So we, if we let u here as x plus 3, so du is equal to dx. And then this one, so we have uh, x is equal to u minus 3. So that this will become u minus 3. We have uh, u minus 3 here as x, and then uh, this is raised to 1 half, right? So we have uh, u raised to 1 half, and then du is equal to dx. So, so this, so we have the integral of u raised to 3 halves minus 3 u raised to 1 half, and then u. So integrating this, we have u raised to 5 halves over 5 halves minus 3 u raised to 3 halves over 3 halves. So, simplifying this, we have 2 over 5, u raised to 5 halves, minus 2, u raised to 3 halves, and then plus c. So, simplifying this, we have an answer of 2 over 5, uh, we have x plus 3, 5 halves, 
minus 2u raised to 3 halves, which is x plus 3 raised to 3 halves, and then plus c. So as you can see now, we have a different answer. A really different, no? really different. We have an x here, 2 thirds, no? So how is this possible, no? Actually, it is possible. We have a different, we just have a different uh, uh, way of describing that function, but they are equivalent. No? So just to prove their equivalence, we can try equating these two answers, no? So let's equate these two functions. Let's just try, no? Just to add here. So we have 2 thirds and then x, and then we have x plus 3, raised to 3 halves. And then minus uh, 4 over 15. And then uh, x plus 3 raised to 5 halves. And then equals 2. So this is our first solution or first answer. For the second answer, we have this. Let's just see the equivalence. Yeah. So if this is equivalent, then everything here should cancel out. You know? Or if we transpose this, uh, let's, see, let's move this to the other side. This should still be equal no, to zero. So just to see if it works, we can try first. What we can do here is so that we could uh, we could eliminate the addition subtraction of uh fractions, we can multiply this by uh the LCD, no, or the GCF LCD. So multiply this by 15, and then you can also divide this by two, you know? so that this will be. Uh, this will become uh, 5x, x plus 3 raised to 3 half, minus, so we have 2x plus 3, 5 halves is equal to, so we have 3x plus 3, 5 halves, minus uh, 15, x plus 3 raised to 3 halves. So we can transpose uh, this one and also this one to the other side. So we have 5x and then x plus 3 raised to 3 halves plus 15 and then x plus uh, 3 raised to 3 halves and then minus 2x plus 3 raised to 5 halves and then minus 3x plus 3 raised to 5 halves. So everything on the right hand, right -hand side should be 0. You know? So these are like terms. So so we can simplify this as 5x plus 15 multiplied by x plus 3 raised to 3 halves, right? And then minus, so these are also like terms. We have negative 5x plus 3 raised to 5 halves is equal to 0. So in here, we can actually factor out 5 here, no? So we have 5 times x plus 3. Then we have x plus 3 raised to 3 halves. And then minus 5 x plus 3 raised to 5 halves equal to 0. So what we can observe here is that we can combine this two. So basically, we have an exponent of 1 here. So we have 1 plus 3 halves, diba? So this will be 5 times x plus 3 raised to 1 plus, plus 3 halves. So this will be just 5 halves. And then minus 5 x plus 3 raised to 5 halves. It's equal to zero. So as we can see, we can cancel out this two. Therefore, this will be zero is equal to zero. If this is true, then uh, the equivalence of these two functions are true. You no. Know? Okay. So that's it. No. So the solution should be this in this uh, subject, but this is also applicable. No. Using your substitution. Okay. So yeah, another example here, we have uh, the integral of uh, the square of ln x over x. So, yeah. so how do we do this now? You know, we can simplify this first. No? So we have the integral of ln squared x over x squared. Yes. So we can write this as well uh, into this form. So we have this and then x raised to negative 2 dx. So we have here as our logarithmic, and this is your algebra. So therefore, your u here, your u here will be ln squared x. Your dv here is uh, x raised to negative 2, and then dx. 
So differentiating this, your u here, your du, this will be equal to 2 ln x, diba? so power rule. And then via the chain rule, find also the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x, no? and then dx. So this will be just over x, and then dx. And then for the integral of this, we can just add this by 1, and then over negative 2 plus 1. Diba? So v here is equal to x raised to negative 1 over negative 1, or we have negative 1 over x. Okay. So substituting this to our integration by parts uh, formula, we have uv minus integral of dd. So u here is ln squared x, and then multiplied by negative 1 over x minus the integral of v. So we have negative 1 over x. And then we have 2 ln x over x and then the x. Okay, so simplify this. We have negative ln squared x over x. This will become positive. So answer, no? So plus the integral of, or actually you can factor out this 2 outside. So 2 integral of ln x over x squared dx. So again, we can simplify this, right? So your u here is, again, using this integration by parts again in this, we can say that we have u is equal to ln x. dv here is 1 over x squared or x raised to negative 2. So u here is the, the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x dx. Right? And then v here is, or maybe we already saw this one, Actually, you forgot the dx, no? So dx here, dx here. So this will be negative 1 over x. So using integration by parts, again, we have here, so u times v again, no? So u times v, we have ln x. And then multiply by 1 over x, or we can write this as over x here. And then minus integral of v du, so we have uh, negative 1 over x. And then, uh, sorry, this should be the one over which is uh, 1 over x dx. Okay. okay, so simplifying this, I'll utilize the new sheet. So negative ln squared x over x. And then plus 2 ln x over x squared x on the point. Okay, and then so this will become uh, positive, right? This will become positive. We have an integral of 1 over x squared. Right? So this will be your answer. Uh, sorry, this will be your uh, evaluation at this portion. So how do we integrate this? So the similar way that we do, but that we did oh, last time. So okay, let's simplify this later. So this is also the integral of x raised to negative two dx, which is equal to negative one over x. But so we have uh, negative one over x. That's our solution. Okay, and I simplify this. So distribute this two here. So this will be negative ln squared x over x plus 2 ln x uh should be x no, no. Oh, no, no. Okay. and then over x and then minus 2 over x and then plus so this will be your integral let me just check my word Oh, this should be negative. So I have uh, a problem here. Oh, I should this should be negative, pala, no? Sorry, uh, my fault. So this should be negative. So negative, negative, this will be negative. And okay, so this will be your final answer. Yeah. Okay, I think this will be the last one. For the last integral, we have the integral of x cubed over x squared plus uh, 5 raised to the second power. So, how do we do this now? Ano? 
it's quite hard to imagine what should we do here right so there is no formula to solve it easily but we can use the integration by parts method still so one thing we can do or one what here clue is that we can factor out or we can separate this uh rational function into two portions no? so we can say that this is also equal to x squared multiplied by x over x squared x squared plus 5 squared dx so what did i do here no so there are countless ways or there are different ways to, to factor out this and uh as you know now there is no lateral here both are algebraic if the factor is out so we can try doing this no? so how did i came up with this factorization so instead of x cube i factored out this x cube into x squared and x and then the x uh is the numerator of this function no? so why is that so because as you can see this will be integratable if we have a numerator that is x diba? if we find the derivative of 2 if uh, we find the derivative of x squared plus 5 we have 2x you know? so if this is 2x then we can cancel out this x squared when using your substitution so the target here is to make this as your db you know? so we can make this your db and this will be your u you no know? so u here is equal to x squared db is this uh x over x squared plus 5 squared dx so finding the derivative of u we have u is equal to x dx yeah but for db this will be a little bit longer no so using u sub so let's say uh, w and also w is equal to x squared plus 5. So dw is equal to 2x dx. So dx is equal to dw over 2x. Yeah. So uh, the integral of this, so db is equal to x over uh, x squared plus 5 squared. And yeah. integrating this, you know. So this will now become no so integral integral so v here is equal to the integral of we have here x and then we have dx as dw over 2x and then over we have u and then squared. So we can cancel it out this x here, this two can be factored out. So v here is equal to one half the integral of u raised to negative two d actually this should be w no doubling up that so d uh the way raised to negative w negative two and then dw and so v here is equal to one half r uh, uh, raised to negative one over negative one and then plus so simplifying this v is equal to negative one over two w so w here is equal to x squared plus five so we have uh, 1 over x squared plus 5. Yeah. So this will be your b. Okay, now uh, using ABP, so using IBP, uh, we have uh, u minus, uv minus integral of bdu. So this will be equal to x squared, and then b is equal to negative 1 over 2 x squared plus 5. minus the integral of bdu so b here is uh, again negative uh, 1 over 2 x squared plus 5 right? and then du is 2x dx so simplifying this we have negative x squared over 2 times x squared plus 5 and then this will become positive, you know, so cancel, cancel, positive. And then the uh, 2 here will, will be cancelled out. 
So we, this will be plus x dx over x squared plus 5. Ayan. So in the, at this point, how do we integrate this? No? So using u substitution again. So u here is equal to x squared plus 5. And then uh, du is equal to 2x dx. So dx here is equal to du over 2x. So using another sheet. So negative x squared all over times sorry, x squared plus 5. Plus, so this will now be x and then, sorry, d over 2x. And then uh, we have uh, over x squared plus 5, which is u. So cancel this x. So we have 1 half, no, so plus 1 half. And then we have uh, what's left here is just e over u. No? We have one half e over u. This will be ln of u. So u here is equal to x squared plus 5. So this will be x squared plus 5. And then plus c. So this will be your integral. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. No? So. Nope, there is no uh, questions here. So if you have any questions, you may ask me during class. And good luck uh, answering your exercise. Hey, guys.